salute your shorts, friends, filmmakers, ships at sea. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us. My name is Hunter Stiebel. I am a actor, filmmaker, and participant with my film b, &B of the 2019 Salute Your Shorts Film Festival. And I am super psyched, honored, and excited to talk to the filmmakers of the film Demand Curve, the Bragg Brothers, Meredith and Austin Bragg. Hey guys, thanks for doing this. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for making uh, such a fun film. It was uh, quite a treat for me to watch in quarantine here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we're going virtual. It's kind of like, uh, I'm sad I'm not in the movie theater, but I'm also just so appreciative to get to escape for a moment from the- Yeah, certainly. Um, so guys, this was a very funny, very fun film that also was a uh, pretty informative. So I'm curious. I, I, I feel like I learned some economics and some crime at the same time. Uh, I'm curious, uh, the classic question, but I want some details here. What's, what was the inspiration? Who's the economics ways? What's going on here? Yeah, the inspiration has nothing to do with economics. Um, <clears throat> uh, there's a probably apocryphal story of, um, Julius Caesar getting uh, kidnapped by pirates when he was younger. And when he heard the ransom, he got so offended that he told them he needed to up their ransom amount because he thought he was worth more. And they did. And when they dropped him off, um, he told them that he was going to come back and kill them. And he did. <laughs> and so it was, uh, it's just one of those interesting stories that stuck in the back of my head. And then you know, we've seen a lot of kidnapping films, but I don't think we've ever seen one with an economist who sort of decides to turn the tables a little bit and try to get in on the action. Definitely. That's so fun. Um, I did not uh, realize it was such a classic tale. Yeah. Um, where did you, where did you hear the story? Just in history class one day or? Probably. Probably. Or <laughs> maybe from our father. There's yeah. a decent chance. He's a big fan of Roman history. So there's a good chance we got it from there. That's funny. Okay, so that, I'm going to come back to this, but that kind of segues into normally I'd ask, where did you guys meet? But I think we, we have a feeling it, it may have been uh, uh, close to home. So how did you guys, because I'm just super jealous of the fact that you guys get to work as brothers. Uh, my brother's out in Michigan. I would love to collaborate with him on something. How often do you guys work together? Like, how did this, how did this evolve? pretty constantly these days yeah i mean we literally work at, we work at a magazine called reason and we do video work for them together like somehow we con them into hiring both of us and so we do video work for them but we've been working and fighting since we were kids um <laughs> literally making star wars parodies on like uh tape recorders cassette tapes yeah. yeah back when we were really young and then um uh when Austin, when I was in college, I made a short film sort of on a whim that turned out to be a light bulb moment. Like, oh, I should do, try to do this more often. Um, and uh, Austin helped write it and he was in it and he helped shoot it. And um, then when Austin was in college, he had a sketch show that he directed and I helped write some of the sketches and, you know, created some videos for that as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so ever since then, it's just been, you know, it's usually typically one of us is quarterbacking, Quarterback. which is our <laughs> shorthand for one of us is in charge of the project because at a certain point you have to make decisions. And if there are, if you can't, 99% of the time we come to uh, agreement, but if we don't, we know who's the quarterback and we realize, okay, you know, this is your project. You, you're the quarterback on this project, even though it'll have both of our names on it typically. Um, and even if it doesn't have our names on it, even if it's just one person's name, there is almost without a doubt at some point where we share a rough cut with each other and say, what do you think? And we come up with notes and we play around with, you know, so we're, we have our hand in everything for, I don't know, oh, I, way too I don't long know. now, decades. Yeah. I don't know if you saw me wince when uh, you said you have, uh, Austin does sketch and then um, he asks you to do editing for, uh, for videos. I was like, that was a wince of like, I'm so jealous. I uh, have a brother I can call on for that. Austin something. is the primary editor, I think. Uh, this would happen to be a, this was a stage. This was on like at a black box theater that he did right. in college before yeah. we had really 
really been able to sink our hands into the editing and have access to video equipment. So that sort of came later. Um, the first thing was really Austin's sketch show and me sort of helping him out, you know, with like sending him ideas that he would reject 90% of them. But, you know, I got 10% in, so it was all right. Did you guys uh, grow up in the LA area or where are you from? No, we're from Virginia. We're outside of DC. Oh, dig it. Okay. Yeah. Is that where you currently are? Mm -hmm. I'm still in Arlington, gotcha. um, which is right across the river. And Meredith is, what, 15 minutes away down in Alexandria. Alexandria. Yeah. How, what is it like? I mean, now, right now, it doesn't matter at all where you are. Um, how has it been being uh, filmmakers, creators um, in not your classic New York, LA spots? Um, it's, there are pluses and minuses. I mean, we have a deep crew of people and friends here that we create stuff with, and we've been doing um you know short sketches or 48 hour films or something here uh for a long time and we've created a shorthand with these people and we've been able to really make some fun stuff um for this film for demand curve and for our, the next film that we did we went to la and we shot with a crew and with um cast from la because we we sort of wanted to see what it was like to try it in a in la with that sort of system right. and um so um and thoughts yeah. well now i need to know it's a good system it's, it's a, a good system <laughs> yeah i understand I mean, why it's built this way it used to be especially when you're shooting with friends it used to be that you know if you've got the more people on set uh the harder we have to work right there's just more to juggle whereas you know we're doing shoots in la with people who know their job and are actively keeping problems from us it's uh it was pretty eye-opening it's a great experience. Uh, I'm yeah. a big fan of it. That is, that's nice to hear. Um, so I, I, I could hear about your story uh, so much, but I don't want to forget about your film. Um, I'm curious, coming back to the uh, original question. Uh, so you are, you, this wasn't inspired by economics, this was inspired by this story. So how did you learn the economics? Because it really, I was like, oh, they, these guys know their stuff. Are these like economics majors that were like, we're gonna make a film? You know, what is, what's, how did you, tell me, tell me. Not even close. I mean, it's, <laughs> I'm the last thing you'll get from an economics major, but uh, you know, enough research, we can targeted research, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna become an economist, but I can become an expert in one tiny little bit of it right. after a week, you know? And then with, I don't want to, uh, I'm hoping if you haven't watched the movie, uh, watch the movie already. What are you doing watching this interview? These guys are great, but the movie, watch the movie. So spoiler coming. Um, how in terms of the, the twist at the end on the window, um, does it, does it add up or was oh, yeah. it conveniently? I mean, it was one of these things where we, once we realized that was, going to be the twist we just reverse engineered it yeah just work backwards till you get the numbers you need mm -hmm. nice. uh, wow that sounded like an economist or uh, <laughs> sort of... <laughs> maybe i'll switch jobs <laughs> sounds <laughs> easy oh yeah at least you can play one on tv mm. um, and uh in terms of believing it um your your lead actor uh william is it a uh, castro giovanni is that correct, correct. yeah he, you know, when it started out, I was like, okay, classic uh, nerdy teacher. And then when we have the turns, uh, it really got fun. I was like, oh, I got set up here. Um, and he really just, you know, played that incredibly well, just all the nuances of all the turns. And you totally, you're like, oh, this guy is, uh, got game here. And I'm curious, uh, how did you find him? What was it like working with him? You know, how much was all you? How much did he bring to it? You know, oh. you know when we, I mean, it's pure luck. I mean, we just put out a blanket casting call and, you know, we, uh, we had a producer in LA who was, you know, doing things hands on and sending us tapes. Uh, originally, you know, that part was for a much older dude. I wanted, mm -hmm. you know, an older professor, but Bill just knocked it out of the park. So we got so lucky with our cast. I, I just, I think all of those guys are amazing. And they were our, down the line, our first choice for every role uh, came through. I'd also was add, available. 
I agree. There was a lot of luck in that they showed up, but let's not forget how many, we probably went through 100, 120 different we audition tapes to find the right people. Like it's not as if we they just landed in our in inbox, right? That's true. That's uh, true. And, and then Teddy, we talked to Producer Teddy all. did a lot of hard work on that. Yeah, producer That's Teddy was great. Um, but yeah, Bill was fantastic. And uh, he, so we saw a lot of that in his read. And when we talked to him, we saw like the, what he could do and the sort of range. Um, and he was just so, we needed someone that could both realistically make that turn. Um, and also you kind of felt bad for him. Like it's, I don't know, you, you, you identified with him at the same time that he was a little bit off and he was great. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Nice. Um, so what, uh, what, you know, looking forward, um, are you guys currently working on anything or are there things in the future on the horizon? Well, so this film was shot in, correct my math, Austin, 2018? Right. So this is, this is probably be the last. If this isn't the last, it'll be the second to last of the festivals before we release it. Um, in 2019, we shot another short called A Piece of Cake. And that's that, um, you know, it's talk about the benefits and being in DC versus LA. Like we have been able to attend a lot of virtual film festivals with that as well, um, uh, perhaps more. But I mean, that's done pretty well and, and, you know, premiered at Tribeca and has gotten to a couple other film uh, festivals. Unfortunately, we haven't actually seen it in front of an audience on screen yet, but we hope to do that. Right. Um, so that's... That is really just pretty much in the you know the beginning stages of its festival run um, right now. So that's and then other than that, we're sort of you know looking for the next thing. Will, thank you guys. It was super fun to watch. Thank you uh, for yeah. uh, sharing this moment with me. I'm kind of digging the virtual interviews. It's a little uh, a little nicer to be able to watch you guys face to face than lights in the audience. Um, but yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, um, I don't know why you're still watching because I told you there was a spoiler. Uh, but thank you very much to the Bragg Brothers. And I'm sure you guys know, but saluteyourshortsfest.com and enjoy the festival. Thank you guys. Such a pleasure. And we are out.